What's up, Internet? So, I want to do a, a quick video for you to kind of show you what to expect when you get to Cactera. Um, what comes in the box, where things go, and what to watch out for. Um, so, basically, you want to get it. It's going to come in a package with this, with the airline is connected, and you're going to have this little baggie full of parts. So, first thing I also want to do is install your airline. So, you can actually just start this by hand. Get that in there. Actually, you can usually get this pretty tight. You might not even need a wrench, but if you do, what is this pen? 3 16 3 16 13 64 works. 3 16 Alright, snug that down. Alright, so your line is connected, but so the later ones we're shipping actually have this set screw installed already. So this is supposed to keep the trigger link pressed up against the cylinder. So you're finding that with the normal position, um, if UPS is less than gentle with the box, you can shift forward and damage the spring. So we start doing this to keep that protected at the same time. So this is currently locked in place. It's not going to fire or move. So 50 thousandths. 50 thousandths Allen wrench. And you're going to want to remove this completely. Um, you only want to have set screws installed if you install both sets. So for the CRN disconnector, if you have just one installed at a time, it's not going to work correctly. And also in the older versions, that screw was not pre-installed. Right. So the overshadow screw? Yeah. Okay. So and that hole is not tapped all the way through. So if yours came without that screw installed, you're gonna to wanna to install it. You have to install it from the top. So we're just knocking this pin out right here. It doesn't matter which direction that goes, right? No. I always do it in one direction because I'm right-handed. But um, so the screw actually needs to come out the other direction. So from the bottom up. You won't be able to thread it in through the bottom here because they're not tapped all the way through. So you actually have to take it, put the drive side where the wrench is going to go in downward into the link and get it started. And then you can come in from the bottom with an Allen wrench and actually just back it down into the threads. And with back down all the way, if you basically tighten it down, it shouldn't vibrate loose in that position. Right. So just kind of torque it a little bit. But if you are to Either adjust that, adjust the over travel, or put in the uh, screws for this here disconnector. Make sure you use Loctite because even once you get it set, they will vibrate loose, and it's very frustrating to get it set perfectly, and then like half hour later, it uh, stops working. So make sure you use Loctite. Do you want to explain what you're doing there, buddy? Yeah, uh, actually, it's <laughs> yeah. If you, have, if you have to put that screw in, if you want to get the uh, disconnector adjustment screw in. Rather than taking this screw out right here and removing the whole trigger link, it's actually a lot easier and a lot less wear on the screw if you just pop this pin out and rock the disconnector and sear assembly out. So 16th uh, uh, pin punch, I think it's an 093 pin, so you can actually use slightly bigger. And just make sure it's not hooked on the spool. Get the punch in and giving a little bit of pressure here, it takes the load off of it and you can just push it right out. So press slightly against the spring? Yeah, just a little bit. And once you have that out, it's kind of a pinch and rock. So you're going to pinch the disconnector in and rock the sear up at the same time. And you can just rock them right out the back and lost the spring. So if you were to install the disconnector adjustment screw, that would be the easier way to get to it. And to put it back in, it's the opposite. We're going to just kind of get the spring pad right on this seam between the rear and the front cylinders. Push up on it. And rock it into place. Then we grab our pin. We're pulling backwards and down. You can kind of see in the side when the hole lines up um, to get the pin back in. I don't have any light behind me. There we go. So, and the pin is loose fitting. Um, it's not going to come out because when it's in the gearbox shell, the sides of where the piston would be was holding that in. So it's not going to come out on its own. Also, if you notice before we took it out, there are four shims right at the spring. Uh, they're there for a reason, is to keep preload in the spring, it's cough them out of the spring tension for the It's also link. what the screw pushes on when you're adjusting the Yeah, it's also a pad for the screw to put on if you put that in. But make sure that if you take it apart, put those four back in, unless you're going to install the trigger weight adjustment screw, or else it might not reset correctly. And if you're in a situation where it doesn't reset, go for it. You know, make sure you have at least four washers underneath. The earlier systems went out with three. We're finding with different spring variances, um, it's better for us to just put four in there. You might be able to go less. But there's a possibility that it won't reset all the way. So depending on how you're configured, uh, you can experiment with that. And it'll, the, the only effect is that it lightens the trigger pull a little bit further. 
Yeah, just so you know, that in your little baggie, you come with, I think, three extra three extra shims. So if you did only come with three, just drop one of those in there, and you're good. Uh, okay, so with that, okay. So speaking of, it. speaking okay. of, I was gonna say we got it, put the airline in, took the screw out of the top. Yeah, I was gonna say talk about shims. Um, sometimes this will pop out in the package, so this will pop out the side, and these shims will come down here. So this is there to keep tensioning that spring. So if it's like this, just slide them back down, and drop them back in the edge there. And like the gearbox that. holds those in place too. And they like, hold in place as well, yes. But just make sure they're in there when you go install it, not like down here somewhere. So the way the valve works is uh, there's some equal and opposite reactions going on inside and the higher the pressure, the more rearward force that you have going on the back of the spool, pushing the spool backwards. So in order to counteract that, there is a heavier spring, which is twice the spring rate of the, the standard spring that's installed. Uh, we find this is usually needed around 130, 135 PSI. If you start seeing on the chrono that you're increasing pressure and you're not seeing an increase in velocity, then it's time to switch over to the heavy spring. Um, the other signs of that are a wider uh, deviation in, in uh, velocity. So you'll see a larger spread because the valve is actually getting sucked closed a little bit uh, as the, the round's being fired. So about 130, 135 PSI, or when you see a drop off in velocity or a failure to increase in velocity as you increase pressure. And yeah, we're finding that the heavy spring, you use it down to what, about 90 PSI? Is what yeah, doing. I mean, this one was actually in testing. I just tested it out there, but it was working around 70. But we wouldn't recommend using it below maybe 90 to 100. Yeah, with the, the heavy spring. Right. But if the light spring, it goes all down to 60 and then up to, like I said, around 130, 135 PSI. size, so we need to switch over to, definitely switch over to the heavy spring. But right. if you're only in the you know, 90 to the 167 PSI range, then just use heavy spring. But to, get, to swap that out, so we're going to go show that. Take away, sir. Why you take it? Uh, I think it's easiest on this one to. Uh, Actually, we'll take the, the uh, reset latch out first because this is actually what pulls the spool assembly back when you recock it. Uh, it's not going to be able to go that way because this is hooked in front of it. So the first thing we do, take in a 16th pin punch. You can go from either side and just driving that roll pin out. You don't have to take it all the way out. I mean, you can, so you could stop it there and pull this out, or you can push it all the way out and then use a roll pin punch. We have a homemade one here that we use because it makes it easier on our hands. But um, that's how we reinstall it. So we'll take it all the way out, take the cable off, and now the valve is free to come out the front. Uh, I think it's easiest, it doesn't, so it doesn't shoot out the front, is to make sure the system's cocked when you do this, and then unscrew the front cylinder. And this is the same procedure you would also do for, for regular maintenance too, just accessing all the parts inside. So now we have the spool, the spring behind it. It's actually caught on the sear right now, so in order to get that out, lift the trigger link which releases the sear now it's actually hooked on the lip on the disconnector so we're going to squeeze the disconnector in at the same time and pull it all the way out you can see the difference between the two springs uh, just color alone so the 10 pound uh, per inch springs are quite a bit stiffer you'll be able to feel it but they're also a brighter coating and the five pound per inch springs are softer and they have a darker coating so It'll come with the, the lighter spring pre-installed, which is good, again, until about 130, 135 PSI. And if you need to go over that, um, you'll switch it out for the heavier spring. And to do that, it's just the same steps backwards. So take the spring over the spool tail, line up the recocking notch with the slot in the side, and just push it back in. The sear should catch it, and it'll just hold it there. And you can continue to reassemble. When you flip it all the way down, that's just where this point here, Probably some people want to know if we need to lubricate this thing. So let's wrap this point. Okay, we can Probably do it all in one it. video. So the system has two parts that move uh, four O rings on the spool and one inside of the nozzle, and then two on the outside of the nozzle. So to grease the system, you can actually just cover the whole back of the spool. It's not going to hurt anything because this is actually isolated from, from the fire and air. I mean, uh, excess grease here is just going to go into the dump chamber and get spread out. But you can put a decent coat of grease. You want to do it on at least these two O-rings, the front two O-rings, and the section of the, uh, the spool where the nozzle rides. So nozzle rides here on an inside O-ring. So for the spool, pretty much the complete tail section, uh, both of these O-rings, and the front section where the nozzle rides. So let's assume we just did that, put some grease on. Uh, <laughs> we'll put our heavy spring in there, since that's what we were doing. Lining up this notch 
with this slot here clicks back into place. Um, you have to pull the trigger link back down to get it to latch because without the front cylinder in place there is no preload. You can see the spring's not pushing on anything so you'll have to give it a pull down to get it to, uh, to hook. And then you have the sleeve and you want to make sure the sleeve has the notches facing towards the front of the system. And that goes over like that. And then you want to grease the inside of the sleeve where the nozzle rides and a little bit on the O-rings. You could probably get away with just doing the inside of the sleeve and after a couple of cycles it'll spread itself out. But for assembly, we, uh, initial assembly, we grease the inside of the, the sleeve where the nozzle rides as well as both of the O-rings here. So put your nozzle in and then same thing with the front cylinder. You've already greased this front O-ring but we do put a light coat of grease in the bore where it rides at the very bottom of the front cylinder. Put that back on. Once you get it started, the pad's going to be in the way. You just use your fingers to kind of lift the pad over the edge and then you can keep on threading it in. For demonstration purposes and adjustments, I'm going to take the fitting off just so it's not whipping around in anybody's face. <laughs> As I flip the thing around, I feel like I'm going to hit the camera or hit you. Let me get that out of the way. All right, so we took it apart, we greased it up, put the heavy spring in, we put it back together. Uh, to put the reset latch back in, which we'll have, to, we'll have to have some sort of pin punch to push it in. Uh, take your roll pin roll pin punch. Again, we, this is one we made so it holds the pin in place. I like to just hold the system like this, get it started, push it down to there, and then use a 3 16 punch to push it all the way in. You make it really easy. Because it is easy. <laughs> With the right tools, it's easy. So, uh, let me get this out of the way. I'm going to take it back out because we're going to end up taking this assembly out to put our disconnector screw in. So, again, 16th inch. To knock it all the way out. And take that out. So we've got our spring change. We have how it came out of the package. I guess now I want to cover the adjustments. Certainly. Okay. So, so okay. your little baggie, you have multiple adjustment screws. It should be, well, depending whether you got an early one or a later one, some that one might be already installed there, or else it's going to be in the bag here. So you should have. Come here. You took it out. I put it in here. Oh. Again, I think it's easier to get this screw, uh, the disconnector screw in by just taking this piece out. So again, we're going to take it out. I have this one already. Okay. I don't need it. Mm -hmm. That's for the tree, right? Take our screw and put it in here. And I'm not going to install it all the way because we don't. We can't adjust this one until we've adjusted this one. So this one you can just kind of leave hanging out. It will start to adjust the disconnector when the head becomes almost flush. You'll see, if you look close, the disconnector starts moving backwards away from the sear. So just leave it a little bit above flush, and that way we're not affecting that when we start tuning the main sear. Um, also, just to reiterate, when you start doing this, make sure you have Loctite under screws when you start. Yeah, I like to put it on about five minutes before and let it start to set up a little bit before we make the adjustments. That way when we're testing, it's not vibrating and loose. It's already kind of started to set. And then once we get it where we want it, we just leave it maybe 30 minutes and come back and it's stuck in place. So we have that on there. Um, do we want to put Loctite on this now? If you want to try that. should have done that earlier. So while we were talking, it could start setting. Why should do it live? <laughs> Can you bring that bag over? I'm going to put a little Loctite on it. Way too much. All right, so take our screw, dip it in the Loctite, and you want to make sure the screws are clean when they come out of the bag. But if you've used this or you have dirt or grease throughout the system, Loctite doesn't like to work if the holes are all greased up. So you want to clean that out, maybe alcohol or acetone in advance. And same thing with the screw, just to be safe. Um, so get the screw in there, leave it a little bit above flush place our spring. Again, we're going to put the pad there, push up on the disconnector so it's pushing out, just kind of rock it over. Get the pin, pull back and down, and the pin goes back in. So that's all working the way it should, and then we'll put the sear adjustment screw in.
And the sear adjustment screw is what's basically allowing you to reduce the trigger pull length. So the length that you have to pull the trigger before it fires. You're moving the, the release closer and closer to the edge so that you're just pushing it over the edge to release. Um, and as you do that though, you can see this rocks up. This connector is going to rock up with it. So in order to reset the two and in, back into balance, you need to adjust the disconnector to be a little bit down to account for how much further the sear has been preloaded on. So to do that, what we do is we cock the system. And this is for bare minimum trigger pull. Um, start adjusting this in. You'll feel it hit and it'll get a little harder to push or turn. Slowly, slowly, slowly. It's probably better if I do it this way. A little finer adjustment. We're actually going to turn it until we feel the spool release off the sear, and that's too far. So we're going to back it off about an eighth to a quarter turn after that. With the heavy spring installed, it's going to snap hard, and you'll definitely be able to tell when it releases. Right there. So about an eighth to a quarter turn back from there, we go just under a quarter turn. So now, if we cock it again, we're on the disconnector because we haven't adjusted that. We'll release that. We should be on the mains here, and we are. So now that you have that, the disconnector is not going to release because you basically move the sear and the disconnector up with it. So we're going to use this lower screw to adjust the disconnector back down. To do that, what you want to do is squeeze the trigger link, push the nozzle all the way back so that it's actually caught on the disconnector. And you'll be able to tell because this doesn't release it anymore. This does. So we're going to go to the disconnector, adjust that in, just like we did for the trigger the sear screw. Try to keep it angled for the camera. And as you saw before, just when the head gets about flush, or the top of the screw gets about flush with the sear, is when you'll start to get actual movement on the disconnector. And what we're doing here is the same thing. We're going to turn it until we hear the disconnector release. And that's the bare minimum right there. That's required for the disconnector to actually release the spool back onto the sear. We want to go about an eighth turn past that. So with the sear adjustment, we wanted to go a quarter to an eighth turn back from that. So you went to that point and then you backed it off. On this one, we're actually going to that point and then past it. If you're just at the release point, you're basically dragging the disconnector at that point on the bottom of the spool. It hasn't fully released. It's just at the point where it can come off the disconnector. So at this point, we should be able to fire it, and it releases back onto the, the, uh, the mains here. So our disconnector is functioning. Our mains here is functioning. And as you can kind of see compared to before, the, the release distance is very, very short. So we don't have to push that link, which we probably should have done the demo before, showing the travel before and after. So that's how you adjust your sear and your disconnector. And again, if you put one screw in, you have to put the other in. If you're not going to do both, then don't put any in. Um, and this isn't required to use it. It's just how you would reduce the trigger pull length or basically the uptake or creep. Um, and then what this is going to effectively do with the, your trigger is going to give you an uptake to this point where the trigger actually hits it. And you're going to feel only the weight of the trigger spring itself in the gearbox. And then it's going to hit the distinct stop right here, which is kind of like a second stage of a two-stage trigger, and then a very short break when it releases. So you have uptake, and you hit this, and then you know right there it's going to fire. Um, if you have an adjustable trigger, you can actually adjust that uptake so that you have a single stage with a short pull. But right now, with the stock trigger, it's basically going to give you a two-stage with a short second stage. Um, yeah, and what you just showed, too, is like the absolute minimum... Uh, trigger travel. You can actually adjust anywhere within that range. Right. The more you back off the main sear adjustment, the longer your trigger travel is going to be, or the, the more creep you'll have. Um, and all the way out, obviously, is the longest pull. Uh, we can go over the polishing, too. I'll pop those out after we do the other adjustments. Uh, looking at the trigger length, <laughs> well, we might as well do it all at one time. Uh, we have two screws here. We have a hole here under the spring stack, we uh, the washer stack under the spring, and we have a hole here. This hole, the, the back hole, is going to be the, your over travel adjustment. So that's going to determine how much further after the release of the, the, the spool when it fires that you'll actually be able to pull the trigger. Um, and again, setting on the extreme end, you can always work backwards from here. What we do is we cock the system, and we adjust this screw all the way up. And you probably should have put Loctite on this. What you can do is thread it up, go to drop the Loctite, 
on the threads and then back it back down and then start adjusting it so you have a little bit of Loctite in your threads. So you got it on there, back it back down, spread it on the threads, take it all the way up till it's touching the cylinder. So now we can't pull the trigger. And what we're going to do is start backing that out while pulling the link or the trigger effectively um, until it allows us to pull it far enough to fire. Right there. So that would be the absolute minimum. And again, just like the disconnector, we're going to go a little past that. That's the bare minimum to just allow it to release. But you want to go a little bit past that, about an eighth to a quarter turn. So we'll do about an eighth turn there. So now once it fires, it stops right after. Um, so that's basically how you adjust the over travel to the absolute minimum over travel. And again, the more you have the screw back into the trigger link, the more over travel you'll get. So you'll be able to pull the trigger past the actual release point. And the front hole here is your trigger weight. So you already have a few springs under there, but if you wanted to adjust it in more than just a finite increment of the spring, you can use the screw. Again, blue Loctite so it doesn't vibrate loose, but is still removable. Thread that in. And you'll feel it just starting to push on the spring stack right about there. So the more you crank that in, you can kind of see the coils getting closer together. The more it's preloading the spring, the heavier your trigger pull is going to be. The less it, it's in, the lighter it's going to be. And in some cases, as you can see, we've already pre-compressed our trigger spring um, and it resets fine. You can probably get away with removing some of those washers because you already have enough preload here existing to push it off the disconnector. You've moved the disconnector point and you've added spring compression. So it'll be in a position where you can, if you wanted to lighten up the trigger pull further, you can almost definitely take out some of the washers, potentially all of them. But if you want to be able to use this screw to adjust the trigger weight, then you need to keep at least one washer in there so that screw has something to push on. Um, so that's pretty much all of the adjustments for the trigger mechanism. Um, version three does not have this screw for the trigger weight adjustment. There's just not enough vertical space in the gearbox to be able to have threads and the spring and the washers. So we provide these three washers uh, in order to allow you to shim underneath the, the, uh, the trigger spring and adjust the weight in finite increments. Uh, we're also working on getting a lighter spring for the V3s because of the longer link length, has more leverage, and that'll allow you to reduce the trigger weight further than it already is. So that's adjustments, version three. Yeah, one thing to note too is that um, when people are going to install it, they are installing the plant, there's some issues with reset. Um, one thing to check if it's actually the system itself or how it's installed. You can bench test it outside the gun. This you can up airline, you can fire it and everything just by pressing the trigger. So you're finding it's not resetting the gun. First take it out, make sure it's working or not working by itself. It's working by itself is probably most like a link is dragging on some kind of feature inside the gearbox. Yes. Whether it be like a boss on the inner bristle lash like that or uh, cut lever. You can check the sides of the trigger link or even put Sharpie on it to see if there's Sharpie gets rubbed off as it's being used in the gearbox and that'll tell you if there's something in the gearbox that needs to be sanded down. And potentially you could even sand the trigger link down um, if you don't want to modify the gearbox because for version, version 2 there are no modifications required. You can just drop this in it should work right out of the box. Um, but if you don't want to touch your gearbox you can sand this down. Just make sure you leave enough wall for the threads and make sure you leave enough wall up here for the spring. You can modify the trigger link on the sides. I wouldn't touch this surface here where it engages with the trigger or the back surface here where it interfaces with the sear. Uh, but the sides are okay to sand down if you have to file something to clear something in the gearbox. Yeah, so just just know that you can use it outside. If it works outside but not inside, then you know kind of it's same with the gun and not the system. So it's kind of a way to isolate where that issue is coming from. Right. If it doesn't work either in either configuration, check if that spring got bent during shipping and also make sure that we remember to put all four washers in there. <laughs> Actually, so different manufacturers, different gearboxes, different gearbox pin thicknesses. So those bosses on the on the, the inside of the gearbox that go into the cylinder head, they're different diameters uh, for different gearbox brands. What we've done is taken a huge database of measurements and basically gone to the upper extreme and the lower extreme and found the largest pins we're going to have to fit within reason. There's certain guns we can ignore with the semi-auto system because they're full auto guns. Uh, but we basically went to the maximum size. So this groove is 182 thousandths wide. A lot of gearbox pins are about 150, 140 thousandths. So you're going to have almost 40 thousandths of play, uh, 30 to 40 thousandths of play. So a whole millimeter of play back and forth. 
which can cause feeding issues because if it goes forward, the nozzle is now longer, effectively longer than it was intended to be. It's designed to be centered on this groove on the gearbox pins uh, based off of VFC gearbox shell. So if it's moving back and forth, uh, we are making brass rings which can go on a different diameter gearbox pin and are fit to the size of that groove which will prevent it from moving back at all uh, or back and forth at all. So those are the gearbox shims and if you are having an issue with feeding where it works for a while and then all of a sudden just stops feeding, it's most likely been moved into gearbox and now the nozzle is too long and it's not moving around chamber. Um, so I got a poor man's solution to that if you don't have time or you need to fix it real fast. You can use like a foil tape like for HVAC applications. You kind of like put their pin in your gearbox shell and put it together and it should make it kind of fill that gap. But the shims are probably the better way to go. So if you're having that problem, let us know. Or look on the website for the shims, which will be there like what next week? Probably. As soon as you get them on, I asked Danny to do part numbers. So. All right, as soon as I get them on, I'll be there. <laughs> They're made. They're sitting over in the shop. And we'll, we'll have different uh, sizes for different types of gearbox brands, right? Like Jeans, yeah, we'll have Jeans. recommended sizes for different gearboxes based off of our database of measurements. But the best way to do it, if you have access to calipers, is actually to measure the diameter of your pin, and that'll allow you to choose the closest size to your gearbox. Uh, and what we're also going to go over is polishing. So one of the, the uh, things you can do, and this has actually been done to this one, so one of the things that we uh, mentioned in a, a Facebook post previously was that you can further tune your trigger by polishing a few select surfaces. Uh, we'll get the sears out also so you can see how they interact. So we have, I'm getting the sears out so you can see how the sears interact with the spool so you know which surfaces you're actually going to want to polish. In normal use, this is sitting here, this is sitting here. And when it's ready to fire, the top hook on the sear is cooked on this ledge on the spool down. You have to pull it off and it's going to drag a little bit as it does that. So the smoother this surface, that step, which I don't know how so you can zoom in, has been polished along with the trailing section right behind it. And we've also polished the mating hook on the sear and the surface that could possibly drag if it weren't pulled far enough. Uh, that just reduces friction, reduces your trigger pull weight, makes it a little bit smoother. Uh, and at the same time, you can do it on the bottom of the spool, which is a small step, the only step on the bottom, and its trailing surface here, as well as the very edge of the hook on the disconnector. So the, the disconnector hook um, and the bottom of the spool will actually allow you to reduce your trigger pull weight because your trigger pull weight is based off of the spring, the, spree load, the preload of the spring, the washer is the screw that you have underneath it, and there's a minimum amount that's needed to pull the disconnector off of that ledge. Um, the, the smoother that is, the less friction you have there, the less force you need to do that, so you can potentially lighten your trigger pull even further by doing that. Um, it will feel lighter just because of this adjustment here. It's going to slide more easily. It's not going to have as much drag. Um, so those are the areas that you'd want to polish if you wanted to take it a little bit further. Um, other than that, there's really not any other adjustments that need to be done. Uh, a note on polishing, though, is we're not filing. We're not taking material away. We're polishing. So we're, we're only basically treating the surface any more than about 10 thousandths material removal off of the, uh, the hook of the disconnector and you'll cause malfunctions. Uh, and you'll also be halfway through the case step for the hardening. So really the most you want to do is like a quick once, two passes on say 220 grit sandpaper, which will take any burrs off faster. And then we use a uh, white rouge or red rouge, depending on what's in front of us at the time, to just get the, uh, the polish or the buffing going on the uh, surfaces. So that is everything, I think, really. Yeah, I believe for like you know, factory 101, I think that just about covers it. And if you wanted to take the disconnector out to make it easier to polish, um, it's an 062 hole, a 1 16th hole. This is a 16th punch that we sanded down slightly so that it's about 50 thousandths, just like the, the wrench. Um, you could probably actually use the 50 thousandths wrench to push this out. That's a, 60, uh, that's a 16th punch, I think. Let's see if we can do it with the wrench, simulate not having all the tools. So that's the disconnector pivot pin held in by that and there's a spring underneath it. So that'll give you a little bit better access if you're using a Dremel to get the uh, end of the Dremel down in there. And then to put it back together, 
pretty straightforward. You just drop a spring in, drop the disconnector, and I like to hold it and just kind of visually line up the holes. Get this started, drop it in, and just push the pin. All right, so I think in this video we covered everything, uh, what to expect when you're expecting a kiter in the mail. Uh, Shane helps you uh, what to expect when you get out of the box, what to watch out for, cleaning, adjustments, stuff like that. But uh, after watching this, you should have a pretty good understanding of the finer workings of the criteria. But we'll be... Uh, I do have one more thing to mention before we go. We forgot one more thing. Uh, <laughs> when this is sitting here, the spring's pushing the sear down. It's actually resting on the top of the spool. So if you're using the, re uh, the reset cable, it's kind of a tight pull. You can actually make it quite a bit easier by pulling on the trigger a little bit before you do that. So while you're doing it. So if it's in your gun, just press the trigger. Yeah, it's, it's, it's a little stiffer pull because you're actually dragging against the, the sear trying to push down on it. So by pulling the trigger or holding the trigger link, it makes it a lot lighter to reset. I guess one thing we forgot to mention too is that the whole pool cable assembly, it's actually designed to keep the... Uh, I, don't know. It's not, I have something else, but go ahead. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> it's designed to keep the uh, spool valve from rotating. So if the spool valve rotates... Gone. It's gone. I don't know if that if the spool valve rotates, your uh, sear just kind of won't interface correctly with it, and that can actually cause reset issues as well. So you do always have to have this in there. Um, I know originally we said you didn't, but that was before we changed the design of the spool valve itself. So, no. Oh. Oh, we saved it. I did save it. I didn't know it. So, so yes, that does need to be in there when you uh, are operating the system. And one thing I did want to mention is these cables are adjustable in length. You can always make them shorter. And to do that, there's a set screw on the side here, which you can loosen. And you'll see that the cable can actually be pushed. It can actually be pushed through. So if you wanted to make the whole assembly shorter, you could pull the cable through, cut it off, drop it back in, tighten it down. Um, I think we cut these to 12 inch overall length once we put the loop on. The loop hangs almost completely out the bottom of an M4 grip. If you wanted to say get it that much out of the grip or all the way inside the grip, you can adjust the cable length to your liking. Uh, we can also make custom cable lengths where basically we put the loop on, we crimp it, and then leave you however much cable you want. That's great. Yeah, because sometimes, you know, things that might loop on something. Yeah, and if you are putting the cable back in, because the reset latch needs to be a certain distance forward so that this little tooth doesn't interface with the spool unless it's being pulled, you need to make sure that the cable is flush with the end of this. So what we usually do is put it down on a hard surface, push the cable down, and make sure it's flat. That way the cable can't extend past it. And then use your wrench to get it snug. And once you have it snug on the cable, you can use some pliers to get a little better grip because it's pretty small. And tighten it down. This is torqued as much as you can really reasonably torque with a small Allen wrench. We're not using Loctite on it because it's such a small drive and the way it's torqued it'll probably end up stripping if you try to take it out with Loctite on it. Uh, we haven't had one loosen yet so uh, I wouldn't use Loctite on that screw. Again we made sure that we're flush with the end of it. Let me drop that back in. Latch back in. Use our fancy little pin punch. But that's like a standard tool you can find at like hardware store or something. Yeah, the difference with this one is because people are doing it all day long here. Um, we made it a little wider on the back so they can push without pushing on something that small all day long. And we made the front a little deeper so that you can put the pin in it and it holds it there. And then you can feed it in using the tool. But a standard roll pin punch should work too. Cool. All right. Anything else you can remember? Not that I can think of now. All right. Well, and then remember something else, we'll make another video on it, but I think that's it for today. So I guess that's Skyfire 101 for you, and we'll see you next time. <laughs>